Hi, I'm DV, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the top 10 things you never knew about garter snakes. Now, as I mentioned in my other video, these are my absolute favorite animals to work with. They just have so much personality and so much energy. They're, they're a joy to keep. Now, everyone's familiar with garter snakes, whether you've seen them in your backyard or on a hike in the woods. Everyone knows about these little guys. But what most people don't know is just how unique they are in the snake world. So I'm going to start at number 10 and work my way up to number one interesting facts about garters. So at number 10, if you've only ever seen these guys in the pet trade, you might not be aware that they're semi-aquatic. And what that means is that in the wild, you'll typically see them in and around large bodies of water. And this is because most of their prey, uh, fish, tadpoles, frogs, uh, salamanders and newts, that sort of thing, lives around those bodies of water as well. So they're really excellent swimmers, and they really love having an area of water where they can get in and swim around. So that's number 10. At number nine, these are the northernmost snakes in the Americas. Now they do inhabit pretty much the entirety of the continental United States as well as middle America. However, there are large populations in Canada. They've also been reported in Alaska, making them the only snake to ever be reported in Alaska. Now the Alaska reports, those are few and far between. It's really difficult to tell if there's a stable garter population there or if those were maybe just escaped pets or something. But the Canada population still gives them the distinction of being the northernmost snake species in the Americas. Now in that same vein, at number eight, these are the only known snakes that can survive having a large portion of their body, temper or body tissue frozen solid. Now we know of several amphibian species that can do this, but these are the only snakes we know of that can. Now there was a study done that showed that they can have up to 70% of their body tissue frozen and still thaw out and survive it. And this is a result of them being, uh, being in such northern climates uh, where they have to be able to survive really harsh winter conditions. But that's, that's just pretty impressive to be able to have that much of their body frozen solid and come out of it fine. As far as that study goes, you know, I don't know what unfortunate grad student got stuck sticking snakes in freezers for six years, but uh, thanks for the knowledge, buddy. All right, so that brings us to number seven. These are the only known animals on the planet that are immune to fire newt toxins. Now you've probably heard of the fire newt before. It's by far the most uh, toxic amphibian in the United States and it's one of the most potent toxins in the animal kingdom. And the only known animal that's immune to that toxin, other than the fire newt itself, is the garter snake. Now you've probably seen the newts in the news at some point because every few years, uh, a human decides that they want to be the first person to eat a fire newt. And that never ends well for the human or the fire newt. So, uh, you know, don't eat fire newts, kids. It's just not a smart choice. But the garter's immunity to the fire newt, that comes from a really long and exciting evolutionary arms race, where the newts were constantly developing more potent toxins to try and keep from being eaten, and the predators like the garters were trying to develop uh, a more adept way of handling those toxins. And in areas of the country where the garter and the newt populations overlap, the garters won that arms race. So, where are you going, buddy? All right. The garter, like I said, the garters won that arms race. So uh, that is only in parts of the country where the two species overlap. So if this guy were to eat a fire newt, he'd die from it. But garters in that area of the country uh, can survive it perfectly fine. Which brings me to an interesting survival tip. If you are ever in a survival situation and you're looking for something to eat, you really kind of want to avoid predators like these guys that eat primarily uh, amphibians, newts, that sort of thing, because the toxins in those animals can still hang out in the predator system for a while, and uh, they're fine with it, but you won't be. So avoid that if you're in a survival situation. So that brings us to number six. These are one of the only snake species that are known to not cannibalize. Uh, there is one species of garter that will cannibalize, and that's the wandering garter, but other than that, these guys will not cannibalize, um, and they're one of the only snake species that won't. Now, that's not to say that if you house them together, uh, there can't be accidents. Um, there have been incidents where, you know, a fight would break out over food with one snake trying to take food out of another snake's mouth, 
um, and that can lead to an accidental cannibalization. So if you do house these guys together, just, you know, I strongly encourage you to really closely monitor their feeding time to make sure nothing like that happens. So that brings us to number five. These guys can cohabit with other species and they're probably the only exotic animal I've ever seen where that's an accepted practice. Now, with the exception of wandering garters, uh, any garter can cohabit with any other species of garter snake. Um, if you are mixing species, you need to be absolutely sure that you don't have uh, males and females in the tank together because you do not want to make hybrids. However, if you have all male or all female tanks, you can mix any garter species uh, in there and they should be completely fine with it um, because they all have the same basic care needs. Uh, I even know some people that for years have uh, housed Dakai brown snakes with garters and Dakai brown snakes are very closely related to garters and have a pretty much exactly the same husbandry needs. So they're just a little bit smaller uh, generally. So these guys can cohabit, which is really unique among snakes. Oh, you periscope in there, buddy? You're blind. I don't know what you're looking at. All right, so that brings us to number four. These guys can store sperm. Now that's not unique to garter snakes, but it's still a really interesting fact. Uh, most snakes can actually do this. But if they mate uh, and conditions aren't right for litter, like you know the mother isn't healthy, there's a shortage of food, environmental conditions aren't right, they can actually store that sperm in their body for a pretty good period of time until conditions are right and then they'll have a litter. And that that's just amazing because you know with a mammal, if the female is at the right point in her reproductive cycle and she mates, that's when you get a baby. Not, you know, a year later when she would rather have a baby. So that's uh, that's a pretty interesting fact about these guys. So that brings us to number three. Garter snakes actually have a mild venom, as do most colubrid snakes. Uh, this venom is not at all medically significant to humans, so don't worry, uh, but it is a misnomer that they're completely non-venomous. Now, this venom is only a problem if you're a nightcrawler, really. Um, however, if you do get bitten by one, you will notice uh, itching and probably bleeding that's a little bit excessive for the severity of the bite, and that's one of the side effects of it. Um, and how these guys uh, get the venom into their prey is they have a pair of teeth that are a bit longer than their typical teeth at the back of their jaws facing backward. So they use those to work the venom that's in their saliva into the prey as it's going down. And uh, it's like a mild paralytic. It'll keep it from moving around, injuring the snake, that sort of thing. Um, and as I said earlier, this is really nothing to worry about as far as humans go, uh, because it's not even, it's nowhere near as bad as a bee sting. I've been bitten by these guys multiple times. Um, and also, you're really not likely to get any of the venom in you if it's a typical bite, um, because they don't want to get those rear fangs in you if, uh, you know, if they're scared, if they're angry, trying to get away, because it's harder to detach those and, uh, you know, Get the hell out of Dodge. Um, so if you get uh, those rear those rear teeth in you, uh, it's probably a feeding accident. Like you go in and they're excited and you smell like food and they latch on thinking you're food. And eventually they'll realize you're not food and let go. It's nothing to worry about, but it is interesting. So that brings us to number two. These guys are famous for hibernating or uh, brumating in massive numbers. I'm talking thousands and thousands of snakes. There are several areas in America as well as Canada where if you time it right and you go to the hibernaculum, that's what the area where they all hibernate is called, uh, at the right time you can see thousands of snakes coming out at the same time. It's really amazing. Uh, one of my life goals to see that. Um, but they do hibernate in uh, massive numbers together. So that brings us to number one, and this is my personal favorite fact about garter snakes, is that they're one of the only snakes to show social behavior. Now it's not complex social behavior like a, you know, a dog or something, but uh, they will uh, socially interact with their cage mates. Um, typically you'll see them do things like head bobbing, uh, which it just looks like their head is doing this number. And 
as far as uh, as far as I'm aware, there haven't been any specific studies done on it. But based on the experiences of you know numerous hobbyists, including myself, it basically just seems to be a way of saying, "Hey, I'm probably not going to eat you. You probably won't eat me. We're cool." Uh, and that's about as far as it gets. Um, also, these these guys, uh, especially skittish males, in my experience actually benefit uh, socially from being in groups. And uh, this isn't, you know, an emotional attachment or anything to their cage mates. It's just that they feel safer when there are more snakes around because it means a predator is less likely to single them out and eat them. Uh, but I've noticed males that were completely unhandleable, incredibly skittish, you know, they'd bite, they'd musk, they'd flip out, run to the other side of the tank anytime you got near. When they have a companion in there, calm down immensely just overnight. So that's, uh, that's another example of an interesting social interaction that these guys have. So I guess that's about it for my top 10 facts about garter snakes. Um, again, just a really great animal to work with. Uh, a lot of people sell them short in the hobby because, you know, they're not the big impressive constrictors. But, you know, they're one of the most interesting animals you can possibly work with. So with that, uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more videos on exotic animals or exotic pets. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And I'll see you later.